You've just entered the journey. Destination, the cross and beyond. At the cross, you beckoned me. You draw me gently to my knees. I am lost for words, so lost in love. I wanted y'all to see me trying to fix the main here. Good afternoon and welcome to the journey to the cross and beyond where our mission, as we always stated, is to help new converts, prospective believers, and old season saints to uncover, discover, and rediscover the love of God and the unique life that awaits each individual beyond the point of salvation. I just got to pause just to say thank you to God for the day. And just thank him for life, thank him for hope, and thank him for healing that comes in his presence. Um, Today truly was a blessed day. It's actually Memorial Weekend, so shout outs to everybody that's going to be barbecuing or trying to get their feet in the sand or get in the water. And definitely we, we honor and we respect those who have lost their lives in service defending this country and 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 those that are still serving right now we thank god for you uh, we pray for you and we pray for your family but we just want to acknowledge those um soldiers whether army navy or whatever branch of the military that you're that you're in or was in and we want to honor you on today for the great work that it is that you have done in defending our freedom not just in america but all over the world um i have a lovely guest today dr shan she's not that new to um the journey certainly not new to me that was my professor <laughs> for my evangelism class and i'm always honored to have her in my presence. Um, we, we've actually turned into pretty good friends, would you say? <laughs> and the topic that we're gonna talk about today is did Jesus preach the gospel? And you all know what I say here, like God didn't give me this ministry to, to debate doctrine and dogmas or whatever. Um, so I, I don't wanna do that. Uh, unless he really lays something on my heart. And this is just, this this one is not like a debate. This is just a thought provoking question. I've actually wanted to do it for so long, but just waiting for the right time, waiting for the release and waiting for the right guest. So we're just gonna chat it up a little bit. We're gonna exchange um, just different views, um, you know, not just our own, but scripturally and just sift through that. And I guess the reason why I felt like it was time to release that, um, for all of you all that don't know, or maybe you don't know because I haven't told you yet, by the way, shout out to you, the audience. Thank you for all your love and your support. Our viewers, shout outs to all of you. We're always praying for you. We ask that you pray for us. You know, if you have topic ideas, um, if you want to see us do events, most of all, if you want prayer, or if you just want to talk, you can reach out to us at journeyttc at aol.com. Um, you can hit us up on Twitter at KB Journey TTC or on Facebook, The Journey to the Cross and Beyond K Brown. Going back to what I was saying, um, this morning, Dr. Shannon and I actually met in the Bronx. Shout out to the Bronx. I don't care. I love the Bronx forever and ever. I love the Bronx and I love the Bronx people. We were on Gun Hill Road, um, the corner of White Plains and Gun Hill Road, and we were just sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with, with the people in the neighborhood. There's just a lot of people that are just broken and hurt and just going through life. And, and we believe that we have a good news that we want to share with those people because we know what that good news did for our lives and we think that it would be selfish if we didn't share that um as you all know i transitioned to house of refuge apostolic church in austin new york and maybe you don't know maybe i didn't tell you um i tra- and transitioned from emmanuel pentecostal faith temple who was just a that 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 family there was just so vital in my growth and in my walk with Jesus Christ and I I love my Emmanuel family but it was time for me to transition and I'm grateful to God for both my families now Horak and Emmanuel and Horak is uh, based in Austin New York they have a branch in Patterson New Jersey 
but now that God is sending us to open a branch in the Bronx because we really want to reach souls and we want to reach lives and we want to impact lives for the kingdom of God. Um, I don't know if Jason has those uh, flyers up there. Korak Ministries, I want to announce this to all of you. Um, we'll be opening a branch in the Bronx. Our senior pastor is Dr. Joan E. Whitaker, along with Pastor Samuel Brown. July 5th, 2015 will be the first Sunday service for us there. And our focus is really bringing families back to God. Um, order of service is Sundays at 6 o'clock. We'll be meeting down there. We'll be leaving Austin and Patterson, New Jersey, and coming down to the Bronx to minister to the souls in the Bronx through the power of Jesus Christ. And the address is 695 or 696A East Gun Hill Road. We're going to be on the second floor for right now. Now. And I just want to reiterate what the what the mission and what the vision is for Horak Ministry. And this is a vision and mission that God has given to preach and teach the word of God and provide a refuge for people of all ages and cultures. We strive to empower people to meet the challenges of the 21st century and most importantly to meet God. Our vision is to empower people spiritually financially, emotionally, and psychologically through a ministry of deliverance through the power of Jesus Christ, through the power of his blood, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we truly want you all to come out, um, visit with us, fellowship with us, and, and learn and grow with us. That's what we're doing in the Bronx. And so, as I said, we were evangelizing. I mean, we were out and we were just talking with people and people had some real needs and they had some real questions. And it was just awesome just to be able to take that time right there on Gun and Roll just to spend with people. So we're grateful for that. And we're going to keep doing it. It's not about building that particular building or that particular branch of the body of Christ or of the church, but it's about spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and yes, he came to save us from our sins, but there's so much more beyond that. Thus, our topic today, did Jesus preach the gospel or the gospel as, as we deliver it today, as we share it with people today? And we're going to dig a little uh, deep into that because some people said the way we present the gospel is salvation and justification. Um, that's not what Jesus preached when he was on earth. So we're going to talk about it a little bit. I'm, I'm going to pick Dr. Shan's brain see what she has to say about it you guys can chime in when we post this or you know you know all the ways that you can contact us we're de this one we're definitely going to do a part two and take it to another level again i'm not here to debate doctrine i don't have time for that i want us to be unified but i think sometimes just to god wants us to think and piece things together. So that's what this discussion is about. If you're logged on, you can um, call us up 718-239-9200 or just rewatch. Tell us what you think. And um, we're going to cut to this video right now. And I believe this is Matt Chandler. It's an interesting way in which he presents the gospel. It is a very um, short video. It's about two minutes. And before we can talk about did Jesus preach the gospel, let's hear how we or evangelicals of today how we um, describe the gospel. And then I'm going to ask, is it right? Is it correct? All right, Jason. The gospel is that there is this infinite, almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful creator God who created all things for his glory. And you and I have belittled that, belittled his name, belittled his glory. Every one of us have at one time or another, or actually currently, believe that our way is better than God's. We fail to acknowledge, give him glory for the gifts he's given us. We question his rule and his authority while at the same time doing that with the brain he gave us and holds together and the lungs and the air that he gave us to breathe with. This is the great blasphemy of the universe. So we've all belittled God and God being just right and holy is not going to allow the belittlement of his name. God then, not being able to spare wrath, sends Christ in the flesh and crushes him. And in so doing, pours out his wrath against the children of God onto the Son, killing him. Then God raises him from the dead. And that same power that raised Christ from the dead is now at work 
and those who would believe. This is the gospel. That you and I have right standing before God, not by our efforts, not by our works, not by our skill, not by whether or not we cuss or don't cuss, drink or don't drink, watch this, don't watch this, do this, don't do that, justified before God by the cross of Christ alone. Your lust, you're not going to be able to fix it. Your bitterness, you're not going to be able to fix it. Your rage, anger, those deviances that have been following you around, you don't possess the power of life and death. You can't resurrect anything. Christ came. That's the good news. That's why we don't celebrate us. That's why we continually celebrate Him. We boast in the cross and the cross alone. The same power that is at work in raising Christ from the dead is at work in me and work in all who believe. This is the gospel. That's Chadler's presentation in a very short uh summary of the gospel this is my lovely guest the posh (laughs) the posh dr shan she was my professor or lecturer for evangelism um, from mount olive bible institute and seminary Um, tell us a little bit about yourself okay and she's not shy so i don't even know why she got that shy face on (laughs) so my name is colleen shand i live in brooklyn new york And um, as you've heard from the host, Kay Brown, I I was a professor. She's no longer in my class, but it was a pleasure having her. I do worship at Horak Ministries in West, um, Austin and Westchester. And um, it has been a pleasure just um, serving God in Austin and Westchester, Horak Ministries. It's been wonderful. I love the Lord all my heart. I enjoy evangelism. It's It's my passion because I believe that people need to hear and to know who Jesus Christ is. Mm-hmm. I believe that, um, as I oftentimes say when I preach on the train, that as much as I enjoy my profession, um, I would give up my profession any day for the, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because at the end of everything, mm-hmm. only what I do for Christ will last. Amen, amen. I, I love the way you said that. I just have one question before um, we get into our topic. So for the purposes of today, do I get to call you Colleen? Sure, you can. <laughs> do I don't have to call you Dr. Shan anymore? I mean, just for today. Yes, it makes me feel comfortable. Okay, good. All right, so Colleen. Yes. <laughs> that felt awkward just now, but <laughs> Dr. Shan. All right, so you heard what Matt said about um, his summary of what the gospel message is. Do you agree or agree or what is your definition of the gospel? As we understand by definition that the gospel is an account of the the life, the death, and the burial of Jesus Christ. And there's something quite interesting that he said as it related to um, us not being able to empower ourselves, that we need um, Jesus Christ, we need the power of God. Mm -hmm. And one thing that was very interesting in what he said was about justification. And that is what we have to understand, that justification in a simple sense represents just as if I had never sinned. And that is what justification did. Um, the fact that, yes, sin entered the world, but the death of Jesus Christ and his blood so po- overpowers and cover us that with all the sin that entered into this world, the blood of Jesus Christ covered it and present us before his father mm-hmm. just as if there was no sin at all. And I found that very interesting. Mm, okay. Now there's, um, thank you for that. There's, there are some schools of thoughts that say the way that we present the gospel um, to, to people in an evangelical or in a way to try to persuade them is not correct. And, 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 and they say that Jesus did not preach about himself and that he preached about the kingdom of God. And, um, you know, we, we, we don't have the completeness of the message when we're trying to, to persuade people. They say we persuade and not compel. And that we should, we should compel people with, 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 the, with the story of the kingdom or the story of Jesus Christ, not, not kind of the whole thing about God's grace and forgiveness of sin. What do you say about that? You know, Sister Kay, I find that... Kay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I find that um, people try to make the gospel of Jesus Christ too complex. Mm-hmm. 
and, and, and places so much bureaucracy on the gospel of Jesus Christ that it takes away from the simplicity mm -hmm. of what it represents. Mm -hmm. The gospel of Jesus Christ is, is, is given to us that we can go out and, and let people know that Jesus Christ died for their sins, that he rose and that he's alive, and whatever state that they are in, whatever position they find themselves in, that grace through justification, through the blood of Jesus Christ, can fix their condition. Mm -hmm. You know, um, of course, when, when we understand that when John came on the scene, we know that John was a forerunner, and as he rightly said, that he was preparing the way to, uh, uh, for Jesus Christ's entry. And so, when John came, he, he, he actually prepares us to uh, the message to, unto repentance, mm -hmm. preparing us unto repentance. When Jesus Christ came, and even John was later placed in prison, we saw that Jesus Christ started preaching that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is, 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 is and there are many schools of thought that, and we have done your research, that talks about the, um, whether it is literal mm -hmm. or figuratively. Mm -hmm. And we could spend today, tomorrow, next week, next year, the next 10 years, arguing about whether or not you know, it is literal or whether it's figurative. But I can stand and, and, and I'll have to believe that it is literal mm -hmm. based on what the scripture says. And because the gospel is about Jesus Christ and because I believe the word of God, I have to believe that you know, it is literal. When Jesus Christ said that you know, he's, go he's gone to prepare a place, mm -hmm. that where he is, there we will be also. And therefore, the kingdom of God is not about meat or drink, as Paul later told them, but it's righteousness. It's preparing us literally to, to receive Jesus Christ that we can go with him. So I just really love talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, what it represents, and not the bureaucracy that comes with it. Because mm -hmm. it is very simple. Mm -hmm. It is simple. It is simple. So then my question again is, um, did Jesus Christ, Christ preach the gospel message that you just described, that Matt described, um, and that we often tell people. I certainly think that he did preach the gospel. Why I think so? He declared that he came not to do his own, but to fulfill the will of his father. Mm -hmm. So if the, 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 within the gospel, you're going to find out that it's going to come with um, talking about compassion, preparing people. Jesus Christ um, didn't came and, and, and as he demonstrated that he he loved people everywhere he went he was doing good he was preaching the people to the people letting them know that the kingdom of god preparing them to to meet um to prepare their souls to meet him he was preaching the gospel by healing the sick he was preaching the gospel by letting people know that at the end of their lifetime that there is going to be the time that they have to meet their savior mm -hmm. so i think everything that he did from the time he came on earth the time he left, he preached the gospel. Yes, he preached in a different way. Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing the way that people probably, we, were, we are doing it now on train or bus, but he left heaven, he came to earth, and when all of that was done, he said, it is finished on Calvary's cross. So I think that, yes, the gospel was preached by the very things that he did. Understand how he did it. Mm -hmm. Also, that he rejected the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He, re he rejected that the thing that were holding people ransom, that would not free people mm -hmm. to receive him. He rejected that. And he gave people a very simple way to accept him by knowing that, listen, I, I, I understand your need. He met their needs as simple as it is. He met whether you were rich or you were poor. He came to you. He ministered to you. And doesn't matter who the individuals were in whatever state they were, he presented himself in such a way that people could receive him. Mm -hmm. It might be different in the way we're doing it, mm -hmm. but I certainly think that he did. Okay, thank you for that. So there's a school of thought, and I'm, I, I have to play the flip side as well because we just want to open everything up. There's a school of thought that says, um, probably a little opposite of what, what we would say or what you said, that Jesus never came preaching about himself that he preached the kingdom and we talked yes. about that. And um, they focused on what uh, the kingdom of God entails, which Dr. Shan talked about, you know, whether whether it's literal or um, figurative. figurative or it's for future, how people have different views of, of what Jesus was talking about. And, and, and uh, I will make mention, I'm not gonna say um, 
this person's name or whatever because I respect them greatly and I and I respect the way they they deliver it and break down the word. But I think each and every one of us um, have a relationship with God, and you can always check check with the word for yourself. Check when we say stuff on here, you better be checking. I tell y'all all the time. Getting that word for yourself because Amen. anybody could tell you any type of foolishness. That's right. But um, I love to go to the Holy Spirit because he is the revealer of the word. Amen. He inspired man to write the word. And uh, a lot of times um, people say the the, the the grace and justification and all those things that we tell people that that was more something that Paul and the other apostles taught and that Jesus didn't teach that. His message was strictly um, about the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And I, I'm going to say this. If you look at everything, the book of Matthew, the gospel is actually, gospel means good news. And when we yes. say gospel, it means the good news of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we don't even realize ourselves that that's what the gospel Amen. means. Sometimes we detach Jesus from the gospel that's message. True. Sometimes we only present the gospel message as um, being saving you from sin. Right. right. And I think it's an error because I think that's why we stop there. And we actually don't tell people about that once you're saved, you actually step into another kingdom. That's right. You live here on earth, and we are expected to, to obey the lands of yes, this law. Yes. But now there's a king, a real king named Jesus, right? And the kingdom is at the kingdom of God is at hand. It's within you. When you accept him into your life, that kingdom becomes real. You have now you've now crossed over into the, yes. the, the literal kingdom that mm -hmm. is here right now. And 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 a king has to have a kingdom. And a king a king that has a kingdom has people that's under yes, the kingdom yes. and under that reign. And so, like when I go to the doctor and the doctor tells me you're about to die tomorrow because I am, yes, I live in this world, but I'm also a citizen of the kingdom of God. I cross over. Yes. I go to that king and he's telling tells me you're going to do what they tell you to do but I say you're not going to die you Amen. know and 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 when I'm when I'm depressed Right, saving depressed and oppressed, or however I feel, and I'm broken, and and I have issues in my finances and issues in my spirit. Right, if you stop it, just telling people that their sins are forgiven and not that there's a life after that, Amen. and that you're in a new kingdom, they're gonna stay in that state. But when I get to understand that it's 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 more than um, what he did on the cross. Right when he crushed sin and death and everything else, and that I get to be in a kingdom now says that no, I came so you can have life and have life more abundantly in this kingdom. So even though you're in a situation and you're going through stuff, the kingdom that you're in says, and the kingdom that dwells on the inside of me for right now says, you are not depressing, you are not oppressing, you rise up above that. And if I stop at salvation and I only tell people about, um, sins being forgiven right and the grace of god and and, and justification which we must do because yes. that's that's how you get into the kingdom that is your bus pass into the kingdom right when all hell breaks down in my life right everybody else on the outside says you ought to be depressed and messed up but in the kingdom the king says i'm giving you peace in the midst yes. of your mess Hallelujah. right I ain't got no money and I don't know how to make money, right? Over here, they will tell me you're a nobody and you're on this program and that program and you're never going to be anything. But because I've crossed over after salvation into the kingdom of God, he says, I will give you witty ideas and inventions. I'm going to tell you how to cook this food and go sell it down the street so you can make money for yes. your family. That is the reality of the kingdom of God here on this earth, that there are, there, there, there are some different things that apply to our lives. You know, Hallelujah. we function, we function a little differently. Thank you, right? And, and for myself, I don't want to stop at salvation because then my life is never going to change. When we realize, and, I, and, and I'm going to say, when we present the gospel message, we, we, it, it has to come through Jesus Christ yes. and what he did at the cross. But we got to take people a little bit yes. deeper to let them know you don't have to live ah. oppressed anymore. You don't have to be depressed anymore. You are now a child of a king. You are joint heirs with him. That is the part that honestly, I, I guess I would agree with some people that we're missing. And, 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 and in the book of Matthew, Jesus was was presented as the king of the Jews. I done told y'all already, y'all saw that Jewish man, that completed Jew that sat here with us. I believe that my God came to this earth 
as a Jewish man, point blank. That don't mean he's a Jew. He came through that people and he came through that nation. I don't see color, neither does he. You know, it's not a white man thing, it's not a black man thing. And so when he came, he came to his own. And when we read, and you taught us this as well, as well as Pastor Guy, when you read the scriptures, you have to read it historically as well. You know, who who is who is it speaking to? What is speaking and who is speaking? Yes. And when and Matthew talks the most about yes. the kingdom, yes. right? The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, those Jewish people, they were waiting <laughs> for their Messiah. Yes. They were waiting for their savior. And they and and he he did come, but they yes. did not recognize him. No. The majority of them did not recognize him. And and the, the Old Testament scriptures or the Torah, which they study, always pointed them to the Messiah yes. and that there would be a forerunner that would come and yes, tell yes. them. And that was John the Baptist. Like you said, yeah. I hope I'm not losing y'all. Follow, oh, no. follow. Get in the book. I'm trying to mess with y'all so y'all can think for yourself and go get in this book, right? Awesome book. And 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 uh, and and John preached the message: repent, because the kingdom, kingdom. of heaven or the kingdom of God oh, is at hand. Yes. And Jesus came, right? If we had to answer yes or no, did Jesus preach the gospel that we're preaching? <laughs> if we're looking at it from that point of view, if somebody wanted a strict, strict answer, out mm. the gate, I'm gonna say mm. no, because he came preaching to to. But I say yes. I say no if it's a out the gate. If if you wanted me to say either yes or no, and I couldn't give an explanation, mm -hmm. I would initially say no, because he came to them, because the kingdom of heaven was supposed to be set up at that time. Yes. But because they rejected him, right, it opened the door Doors. for all of us, and that was always the plan anyway. So he came to his own to save them, and we are now his own. Um, for those that say that Jesus didn't preach nothing about grace and, and, and being saved, Right out the jump, I think it's in Matthew chapter 1 when he's introduced. If very angels from heaven say, Let, let's read it. Matthew, I think it's Matthew. Help me, y'all. Oh, I should say, help me, Holy Spirit. You wrote this book. <laughs> he says, um, hold on. Is it Matthew or Luke? <laughs> where, where his birth is being announced. Yeah, Matthew 1, verse 2. Verse two? Matthew 121, you're shall, absolutely right. And she yep. shall. Can you read that? It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay. So that's out the gate when 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 before he even came. This is who he was being announced as, as a savior. Yes. And that he was gonna save from sin. Right. Right? And yes, he talked a lot about about the kingdom. But he said to enter into that kingdom, you got to do what? You got to get over, get over yourself, repent, and receive the kingdom of God, receive the things of God. Yes, and 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 the kingdom is Him, right? Really, and he said you have to receive Him, right? Because he said, I am what? I what are some of the I am um, of Jesus? I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life, right? I am the way. I am the way, the truth, the truth and the, and and the, the life. life. No one gets because to the Father, the Father without Father. coming through me. Mm -hmm. I, am the door. Mm -hmm. I am the kingdom. I am the door. Right. I am the good Big shepherd. shepherd. I give my right. life for Hallelujah. my sheep. Thank he you, said, I, I lay down. Nobody took my life. I'm laying down, down my life for them. You can't come to my Father. You can't even see him unless you see me. Right. Right? So that kind of sounds like salvation, doesn't it? It sure does. And he says, I didn't come to call the people who aren't The sick. righteous. Right, I came to call the sinners Sin. to right. what? Repentance. To repentance, right? right? And um, and he said, if you believe in me, you will have eternal life. life. And you will have waters, uh, living waters, waters flowing, flowing through your, yes. fr from your belly. Mm -hmm. So the school of thought that kind of leads leans kind of more on the prosperity side that says oh nobody don't want to hear nothing about that that jesus didn't preach that that's that's paul with that gray stuff right the grace was you, you, you ever read a book and you didn't really understand it fully or there's hidden messages in certainly. it certainly right and then someone comes along Long and opens the up the mystery yes that's what paul, paul did. did yes because there are those that say jesus christ did not preach all this grace stuff, right? 
and he lived grace. Everything he did, mm -hmm. if you read through it, he, he lived grace and mercy and love. Yes, yes. He said They said Paul was teaching something different. And Paul was not teaching anything different. He expounded did. That's exactly on what Jesus Just, did. Because yes. Jesus' ministry lasted only three and a half years. Right. You know, Paul and, 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 and the apostles lived for many years. And, and that's the reason why we're even here talking yes. about it because of, of what they did. Exactly. You know, and Matthew 28, what verse is it, 18, Dr. Shan? Yes. Sir. You taught me well. Ha. <laughs> that says, um, go therefore, can you, what does it say? 28, 28. It's Matthew 28, 18. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred money. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou owest. Is that the scripture you want to find? No, I got it. I'm sorry. But that, hold that. What scripture you want? That's good. Matthew 28, 18. And all okay, power is given, given unto me, me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of mm. the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded mm. you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So what 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 did what did he teach them? What did he show them the whole time he was with them? He basically showed them, I mean, the, 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 the fact that he was now healing, the fact that he was now um, delivering, the fact that he was now feeding people. Mm -hmm. He said, "No, no, these are the works that you see me do." So he said, "Now go out and do greater works." Mm -hmm. Mani show the greater manifestation through the power of Jesus Christ that they would be receiving mm -hmm. when they all gathered in the upper room and the, because through the power through the Holy Ghost and through the anointing God said okay there will be greater manifestation and it's like an, it's like an extension of what Jesus Christ had already done that people are going to see even though God would no longer be present but they will see the work of, the, of Jesus Christ through them mm -hmm. as a result of what they will see manifesting. Mm -hmm. And without denial, they will know that this is the grace of God upon their lives doing that such wonderful works. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. So, I had said if, if somebody had to get me down and say, based on everything that he said, like Matthew, whatever, that I would say, no, he didn't preach it exactly the way that we're saying it. But when all the pieces are put together, it's the same message. You know what happened? Jesus actually was very practical. Mm -hmm. And therefore, everything that he did was in a very practical sense. He didn't come, okay, thinking, okay, he was going to do this. But as the needs were presented, he dealt with them. And as a result, the word was um, went out that everywhere he went, he did good. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, his works and what he did followed him. And it's through what he did that now that this work, his ministry began to spread. Mm -hmm. Because undeniably, there's no way you can come in contact with Jesus and receive such blessing and not begin to, it, it doesn't spread. Mm -hmm. That people will know who Jesus Christ is. So yes, in fact, it didn't, was not done the way we are actually doing it. Jesus didn't, Christ didn't come with any bureaucracy or any red tape. He just did what he had to do. He just came knowing that the Father sent him mm -hmm. because there are needs to be filled here. And he did exactly what the Father, with no set agenda more than what the Father had instilled in him to do. Okay. And now, now another school of thought says the gospel, it's a word just by itself, is the, means the good, good news. news. Good news about something or right. the good news about something. Or someone and the gospel is the good news about Jesus and and all the extras that we add to it is not necessary but I don't really know how you can talk about Jesus and everything that he did without it leading right back to that saving grace and 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 mercy and justification and love and 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 the, the power of God the holiness of God the righteousness of God and and what he did for us, and also the kingdom which we live in now. There is a kingdom of heaven which we as believers yes. believe that is coming. Yes. One day soon, Jesus' second coming, when he's coming back, not as the little the little lamb, the little calm and, and, and gracious lamb, but as a roaring lion. lion. 
right? And he is going to be judging at that time, and we do believe that there will be new heavens and new earth, and when God's rule is literally set up on earth like it is in heaven, that's actually when, that act is actually the kingdom of, he of heaven, but the kingdom of God, we actually live in it right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think the way that I want to pre present the gospel, I want to present it as a whole. So, and honestly, that is what we're doing here because this is about the journey to the cross right. and beyond. beyond. Exactly. You know, we saved and we live in a kingdom now. Um, I don't think you can separate the two. Absolutely not. I, I kind of wavered away from something I was going to say about um, a man that I said I, I respect and uh, his writings and everything. And I don't want to play the video because I don't want to take anything out of context. But he basically was saying, you know why you ain't getting nobody to listen to y'all? Because you go on your jobs and you go to these places and people are broken and you telling them about Jesus and the blood, the blood, the blood. People don't want to hear that. Um, he said they want to hear you got to tell them about the kingdom and you got to tell them you got problems I got something for that you know he said he said tell them that first and then after that if you want to tell them about the blood and, and Jesus didn't do that and he kind of was like Jesus ain't preach nothing about no blood and Jesus didn't preach about himself and he did talk about himself of course you know so and I'm gonna say not that he's wrong because sometimes you have to meet people where they are in their situation, mm -hmm. right? Before you run up on them like, um, you can even talk about your experience today. Before you <laughs> run up on them like, Jesus, same. You know, there's some people that need to hear that. There's some people that right off the bat, they need to hear that, you know, all that, that stuff that I did and this darkness that I feel. This is why we need discernment and we need wisdom. It's one message, the kingdom of God, the grace of God, the saving power of God. It's one gospel, and it's still the good news about Jesus Christ, what he did then and what he's doing now. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know? But I say wisdom, because some people need the blood, the blood, the blood, and you got to plead the blood sometimes, right? <laughs> over, <laughs> over yourself and over your environment and over people. And, but it's some people that want to know that I can get out of this situation. And that there's somebody that cares. Talk about what happened with you today. You know, I'm just okay. Just uh, and and okay. And just, okay. I, Colleen, <laughs> I won't call names either because I, I right. actually looked at that same video clip, and um, it wasn't out of context. And even if you said it wouldn't be out of context, because when you are dealing with a collective group of people, you really have to be careful. And because it, it, it's as if someone would say, "Okay, talk about Jesus, but not talk about his death." preach mm. Jesus but not the cross mm. you can't separate these and what what Kay was talking about that this afternoon I met a young man his name is Jacqueline and I said how are you and he was hurrying and he said to me oh he has so much on his on um, going on and you know I've never done this in all the years I've been evangelizing I mean but I held his hand I had I just had to hold his hand and I said can you stop for a moment and, you know, I said to him, you know, what, what's going on? And he said that there's just so much thing going on in his mind. But right now, he's just going to talk to, uh, uh, he's, not, he's not saved. But he said to me, for me to say that there is no God would not be true. Because there's a higher power. And he said, there's, there's something greater that is going on here. He's not saved, but he is aware that there is a God. And he's aware that there's a situation that he can't deal with. And where is he going? He was going to meet another friend that is older than he is to, to, to discuss the situation. The friend is a Christian. And I commended him. And I said, you know, the fact that you are not going into the rum bar, you're not going somewhere else, you're not trying to smoke, but you are going to talk to someone. And I had to commend him. And I held his hand and I said, I want to let you know that Jesus Christ cares about you. He loves you and he wants to save you. But and I, what I, like I said, I really had to commend him, Kay, for the fact that he was going to meet someone mm -hmm. and that is why you know my heart is so you know overwhelmed even now that we we take the gospel of jesus christ and we distort it and we do all kind of things with it mm -hmm. when people are dying and people need jesus and people need salvation you know how many times Kay, i get on the the bus in the mornings when i'm going to work and i said okay i'm not going to preach this morning i don't feel like i want to preach but as soon as I get on the bus, 
I have to open my mouth and I have to let someone know John 3.16 or John 3.17. Very rare do I go away from those scriptures because people need to hear the gospel. They need to know that Jesus Christ died for their sins. He rose and that he's coming back. They need to know that there's a better way than what that which they're experiencing now mm -hmm. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing will be able to do it. And I know as we gave that young man the flyer that he is going to come to, to, to our service because he is aware that there is a better way mm -hmm. and there is a better way and that's what the people of God need to do lead people leave the bread tape leave the bureaucracy leave the, uh, the do's and don't leave everything that is that is not relevant and let people know that Jesus Christ care for their soul and preach the unadulterated word of God nothing more nothing less he didn't call us to do anything else mm -hmm. just preach the word of God and even though we are discussing this and we are trying to you know to, to provoke the minds of people we already they know that the gospel is simple. The gospel is about the account of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I think I've said too much. No, that was awesome. That's a great way um, to, to, to sum it up. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and everything that's attached to that. Um, for those that said Jesus never talked about his death, burial, and resurrection when he was on earth, and that's, that's, that's not correct. Um, from you go back to the books that we call the Torah, the, the, the Old Testament, those books predicted it too. Yes, yes. Prophesied it, even the way that he would die. And and he spent a lot of time preparing his disciples yes. for his death and talked about how his death would bring life to yes, others. Yes, yes. You know, and how after he died, that he, would, gonna, he would be raised yeah, up on the third day. And he did. And, and he did. <laughs> and how he was going to prepare a place for them, Yalla, allowing yeah. them to enter into the kingdom. Yes. So, so Jesus did, in fact, he preached himself. Yes. Right? As the way to the Father, as a way into the kingdom, as the truth as life, as the bread that we need, as the water that we need, as the good shepherd that we need. Um, yeah, he preached prosperity too, not just financial, um, but emotional and spiritual and everything else, right? He talked a lot about money. Um, he, he preached about healing. He yes. I'm sorry, he didn't preach about healing. He did he healing. healing, right? Cause he the king, he's the word, and he is the gospel himself, right? Mm. And so we have to take all of that into consideration. And he definitely preached repentance. Because sometimes yes. we leave that out of the gospel. Sometimes we lovey-dovey it up, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm all for that because that's what this ministry is all about, the lovey-dovey of God. But we talk about everything. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And there is a, a, a price to pay for the choices that you that you've made in life if you if you don't repent and turn so i don't want to negate the fact that out the bat he came running talking about repent right um i was saying we sometimes we over, we present the grace of god and we you can't over present the grace of god because you can't even put a cap on it that's but right but in the midst of that i think for us to really receive it I see so many of us, as I keep saying, and it's bothering me. This is why I don't want to be stagnant. When we just get to the point that we're just saved mm -hmm. and there's no growth is because we don't go beyond that. And sometimes, sometimes, not all the times, our hearts were never truly repentant. Mm -hmm. I, I feel sometimes we skip a step. Mm -hmm. Me and my friends are joking around and say the, the, the save finally catch now. Because, <laughs> you know, you can fake it. Yes. You can fake it for a while. You know, until you start to experience certain things in life, then the save really catch on. You know when it catch on? When your heart becomes repentant and you realize that the state you're in, you can't really do nothing about it. Yes. You know, and so um, the, the, the saving grace of God is awesome. The kingdom of God is now. We, we're, we're putting all of it out together. Yes, he came. He came to save his people from their sins. He said he came to call those that were lost he said yes. he if he got a hundred sheep he would leave 99 behind he would leave y'all in the cut just to go get the one sheep that is lost somewhere not just because it got lost it got lost because it chose to get lost probably doing whatever it wants to do he said i'm gonna leave y'all over there and i'm going back to save this lost sheep and bring it back into the fold so yes yes we're gonna round this out by saying jesus christ did preach 
the gospel message, but not fragmented the way that we present it. He preached all Amen. parts of it. Salvation, grace, repentance, right? Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, and what else? What am I missing? That's it. <laughs> but you know, I just want to add something that. to what you just said and um, a moment ago. When you talk about that Jesus Christ did in fact preach his death. And what we have to remember is that why Jesus Christ preached his death was the reason why he came. Because without the shedding of blood, there mm -hmm. will be no remission oh, of sins. sins. How point. could he come to earth? The only reason he came to earth was to redeem mankind. And mankind cannot be redeemed through any other way. We know from the Old Testament in the book of Leviticus that talks about uh, in Leviticus 17 verse 11 that, you know, the shedding of the blood, uh, the shedding of, um, sorry, the killing of animals, the bulls of ram could not have saved us and could not have saved us. It was preparing us for the death of Jesus Christ. So had Jesus Christ not died, had he not prepared himself unto death, then there would be no um, life. Mm. And that is why we through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his death, we not only have life, but we have life more abundantly in this earth and in the life to come. That is what gives us this great hope mm -hmm. because as a result of a shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, as a res result of his death, we now receive grace. When we, through grace, we have life. And because of that, we can, we can preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, giving hope to those who are lost. And listen, listen, yes, he died, yeah. but that was not the end. He rose and that was still not the end, but because he lived triumphantly today, you and I can believe in the gospel because it is authentic whether or not it came to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. It doesn't matter. And whether or not the accounts varies, the fact that when you search them, they are compatible in mm -hmm. every way because they speak in one accord, in one way that Jesus Christ did die and that he rose and that he is alive forevermore. Amen. I mean, I ain't got nothing else to say. <laughs> I hope um, that we didn't persuade you, but I hope that we compelled you to receive Jesus Christ into your life as Lord and Savior. Um, the invitation is there. The invitation is open. I'm going to ask Dr. Shan to say a quick prayer for our viewers that are that are on the edge, and also for our viewers that are that are new converts that 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 they would continue to grow and that they would that 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 God would open their revelation to realize that they're living in a kingdom, and you're 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 a child of the King. And there are benefits that come with that. We'll have to talk about that the next time. And then we're going to round out the show by listening to, I haven't heard this one in a while, Tasha Cobb's Power in the Name of Jesus. Um, he said, come all those who are heavy laden and burdened, and he will give you rest. Dr. Shan. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have given unto us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, when your father sent you to earth, that you did not resist. Father, when you knelt, Lord, when you knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane, you said, it's not my will, but thy will be done. Because you look, oh God, 2,000 years, oh God, you look many years ahead and you saw the needs of your people. You saw that those would be destitute and needing salvation. And that is why you were willing, oh God Almighty, to shed your blood. Through the shedding of your blood, God, we can be redeemed. Father, we thank you for those who are lost, who don't know you, God. We pray for those, oh God, who are locked away, oh God, in your minds, those who have been confused, those those old minds, oh God, are just heading in the wrong direction because people are preaching and teaching, oh God, just not the truth, oh God, and your people are becoming confused and people who don't know you, God, are straying away, God. But I pray through the Holy Spirit right now, God Almighty, the one who, oh God, who cares and understands, the one who can be touched, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the feelings of our infirmities, God, that your people, wherever they are, God, that they come to know you 
you, oh God, that you care, Hallelujah. as you love them, oh God, and that you died for their Thank sins. You, we pray, God Almighty, those who are the atheists and those, oh God, who are corrupt in this world, that they too will come to know you, God Almighty. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, that we who preach the gospel will remember, oh God, that the gospel is about Jesus Christ, yes, that he shed his blood, and that he cares about people, that we will understand, God, that the gospel is to bring hope to those yes. who are lost mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, God Almighty, that you bless those who are preaching the gospel yes, and Lord. teaching and bringing souls and those who come in that we will receive the word and that we go out, oh God, to let people know that you need them. Thank you for this show. Thank you for those who are listening. Thank you for your daughter, K. God. May she continue, oh God, to hear you and to preach and to teach and to encourage people into the kingdom. We pray for those who will covenant and come in agreement with this word. We pray for those who will partner and help this ministry that it will grow and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless, oh God, and have you with God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. God bless you. See you in two weeks. Just lift your hands and just release the name of Jesus. Come on, let's just... There's power in that name. Come on, there's power in that name. Don't stop saying it. Jesus, Jesus. We know where the power is. Come on, somebody raise up the name of Jesus. Come on, raise up the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus, 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 we know who you are, and we bless you for who you are, yeah. Power is in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, listen, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, yeah. to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Can you say there is power? There is power. Come on, all over the room. In the name of Jesus.